Now note that I'm gonna right click and do another. I'm gonna duplicate this again. Right click and duplicate. I'm gonna close up uh, the ham boogie over here and, and note that we can also hit this drop down and break it out by class. So if I break it out by class, run it. Now I've got only one class right now, but if I had multiple classes, this could be quite useful because it's gonna, it's gonna give me not only the information per class, but also the total on the right hand side, which so that those classes are redundant because we already have it in projects, but the, the ability to, to break everything out by class can give me a double check on the numbers and can run a nice report that breaks everything out by classes. Now, if you don't have the capacity to use classes or you're using classes for something else already, you could do a similar thing with the tags. So I can go to the tags over here. And so now I've got my project here, but it doesn't give you that nice total at the end. So it's kind of similar. Tags are like a little bit, a tier down from, from doing similar functionality as the classes. So, so if you don't have capacity because you're in a lower software that doesn't have the classes, you can try to use the tags in kind of a similar format. Or if you're already using classes and location tracking, then you might use tags for like a similar kind of thing. All right, so then I'm gonna go back to the first tab and let's imagine, now, now note that if we recap things here, the way we got that 100,000 estimate was probably something like we estimated the cost of the job and then our profit on the job, which we said was another 30% of the cost, right? Another 30%, and that's where we got the 30, that gets us to the 100,000. So if we were trying to recognize revenue kind of as we go on the job, recognizing you know the progress in terms of costs, then we, could, we would do a ratio or some of something like this. This is what we've actually paid for at this point in time, the costs we've incurred divided by the total estimate that would mean that we had were basically 16.92 percent done so that would mean the revenue that i would recognize if i if i was on like a trying to recognize a percentage of completion recognize as we go would be something more like the uh, 16.923 times the 100,000, right but what we've recognized in revenue so far is the 10,000 just based on the billing schedule. And we recognize that before we even, you know, paid for anything yet, right? So that you can see the disconnect between the billing and when you might recognize revenue on a, recognize, on a revenue recognition. So we're gonna continue with, with the separation between the two, and then we'll take a look at the differences uh, later. So let's take a look at, at the, the next billing item is gonna be in, in next month. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's say that happens in month three. Let's actually record the billing. So I'm gonna go over here and we'll say, okay, let's go back and we're gonna go into our projects. Now let's actually record the receipt of the payment and then we'll record the next, the next billing that happened. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's go drop down and let's say we received a payment. So now we're gonna say project number one and let's say this happened on, uh, we, we, let's say this happened actually on 7.07.15.25 uh, and we got paid by the client for that original deposit that we sent out. And it's gonna go into the checking account for this invoice. And so let's go ahead and say, okay, save and close. And if I go back over here to the balance sheet, what happened goes out of accounts receivable and, and uh, into the checking accounts. If I look at the checking account, so now we see the payment that we've received. We have negative still because the expenses were greater thus far. All right, next thing, we're gonna be back in our projects over here on the left and we're gonna say now we had another bill invoice that we're gonna be sending out just according to our invoicing schedule. We can pull that in from our estimate using the progress invoicing and we're just gonna say, hey, look, next time, the next estimate we had was the 25%, 25. So I'm gonna pull in 25% and then it's gonna pull in nicely like per line item. So it gives us a nice breakout between materials 
labor and overhead that we just kind of made up so that we can see those different line items. And then I'm gonna say this happened on 080125 for the invoice. It's gonna go into project one. All the classes are gonna be lined up. This is gonna increase accounts receivable and the other side's gonna to go to revenue of the 25,000. Let's go ahead and save and close it. And so now we've got income at the 35,000. If I go to my uh, reports here, run it. So, so now we've got accounts receivable went up for the 25,000 and the other side went to revenue. If I run the profit and loss by uh, date, now I've got 25,000 recognized in August, the second month. Now note again over here, you would think if I had revenue recognition, uh, I should recognize something like 16 and then 25 instead of, instead of, you know, instead of uh, by the billing process, 10 and 25 here. So then I'm gonna say, okay, let's go back on over. Let's say that we received, we're gonna receive, and if I look at my breakout by class, so now we've got our breakout by class here. We only have one class so far, but you can see the idea. So if I go then to the first tab, let's say we've received payment on that one. I'm gonna hit the drop down and say we're gonna receive payment. And on project one, let's say this happens 15 days later, 8.15, they pay us. Time is passing, time is flying. So we're gonna receive that payment. This is gonna reduce the accounts receivable and increase cash. So I'm gonna save and close and then go over here and say, okay, balance sheet, the accounts receivable goes back down and it goes into the checking account. All right, and then let's say that we're going to have expenses for for month number three of 19,527. So let's record those expenses. Next project happens. I'm just gonna do it with one expense form again. And we'll say this goes to vendor one. These are expenses for the job on, this is gonna be on nine, one, let's say. Actually, wait a second. This needs to be on the same date. Let's bring it back down to, to 815. That were the job that were, okay. So these are the expenses for that time frame. Now it pulled over the same stuff from the last time, but now I've got new numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this to be something like 10, let's say this is 10,000. I'm not gonna make it billable. And then this is gonna be, let's say 10,000 not billable. That gets me up to, to 20. And actually let's say this is, let's say this is 9,000, 9,000, not 90. That gets me to the 19. And then in the overhead, we'll say 527. So 527 overhead, not billable, not billable, not billable. Okay, so this is an expense. It's gonna decrease the checking account. The other side's gonna go into the cost of goods sold because these items are, are telling it to go to cost of goods sold. So let's save it and close it. And then I go back on over here. We can run it. So checking account goes down. The other side's going into the expense and the expense here for uh, August. So I should have done it. So that's, yeah, I should have done it for the next month. I think my expenses are off. I had two in here for August. Let's go back in here, check it out. Yeah. So this one, let's, let's change the date to the next month here. I'm gonna go back in, let's drill down on this one and let's bring it up to 9.15. All right, then I'll save it and close it. So now if I go back to my reports, uh, hold on, I don't wanna save it, exit and run it. So now my expenses are, are in the next month as they've been incurred, right? Okay, and so, but, so that would mean that you would think I would, if I was doing my percentage of revenue recognition, that I might recognize something like 25, 385, but I'm only recognizing revenue basically as the billing 